Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to sort of a different Power Up webinar. We're calling it Ask Larry Anything, sort of a wide-ranging collection of questions that people have submitted in advance and stuff we're going to ask as part of this particular webinar, but it's on any subject, well, any subject that I've written about, and I'm looking forward to sharing some of the knowledge that I've got with you. So let's get ourselves started. We're going to get right to the questions, starting with the ones that were submitted in advance. Let's see, David Mills has got a whole bunch of questions. First is, could you explain the difference between a dedicated video camera and a video-capable DSLR? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Under what circumstances should you use each? A dedicated video camera is a camera which is specifically designed for recording video. A DSLR camera is specifically designed for recording still images, which has the added capability of recording video. The benefit to a DSLR camera is one, generally, lower price, and we can argue this, but if you compare it to traditional video cameras, that's true. It uses um, a different, different types of lenses, more flexible lenses, lenses you can swap out. But the big advantage to DSLRs is they've got a very, very shallow depth of field. The amount of area that's in the image that's in focus is not very deep. If you look at a traditional video camera, and here GoPro is the exact opposite of this, has a very deep depth of field from very close to very far away. Everything is in focus. Depth of field is a relationship of lots of different factors, but one of them is the sensor size. Most inexpensive video cameras have very, very small sensors, a quarter inch, a third inch. Uh, DSLR cameras have a very large sensor, maybe an inch, inch and a quarter. Because the size of the sensor has a great deal to do along with the lens and the aperture and a lot of other stuff that I don't want to go into at the moment. Because the size of the, the chip, the sensor, has a lot to do with depth of field, people adopted DSLR cameras because they had a much richer, quote, more filmic look. The disadvantage is the sensor on a lot of these earlier DSLR cameras would overheat. And you couldn't just simply turn the camera on and let it run. Uh, after 20 minutes, it would shut down because of overheating issues. The second problem is DSLR cameras were never designed to record audio, and they had the had really, really bad audio recording and bad microphone connections, and the audio really had to be recorded to separate systems, which got us back to the old-style film way of shooting. So the advantages to DSLR is, one, generally lower purchase price, two, larger sensor, shallower depth of field. Disadvantages are you can't turn them on and record all day. Uh, generally poor audio characteristics. Well, when these DSLRs first show up, they totally changed everybody's perception of what video actually is. And now all the camera manufacturers are starting to scramble to come up with large sensor cameras that are specifically designed for video recording. And we're seeing this in the Canon C300. We're seeing it in the new Sony F5. We're seeing it in, in lots of other cameras that are emulating the shallow depth of field of a DSLR camera. But in a video package where we've got really good audio and we've got really good uh, recording capability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you own a DSLR and don't own a video camera and everything you shoot is short takes and a short, shallow depth of field is important to you, then DSLRs are a good choice. If you're a run-and-gun documentarian, shallow depth of field is going to drive you nuts because nothing's going to be in focus. If you're able to set up every shot, put it on a tripod, make sure it's in focus, monitor it, in other words, shoot as a film, then DSLRs are a good choice. There's no perfect camera. You pick the one that matches your needs. Right, Jeffrey, you're using the Canon Mark 5D, 5D, and there's a lot of people that love it. The stuff that I tend to do is much more documentary in nature, and I don't have the ability to, to, to always be able to worry about focus. For me, the 5D might not be a good camera. That doesn't say it's not a good camera for you. I'm just saying that, that there's no one perfect camera that's going to have all the characteristics you need. You need to think about what it is that you shoot and how much time you have to set and whether you're a one-person operation or multi-person operation, you can find the camera that best meets your needs. By the way, membership is a great value. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library can save you money at an incredibly low monthly price of only $19.99. Our training covers Apple, Adobe, and Autodesk software. We update it every week. And for more information on what it contains and the benefits you get, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz 
slash store. And thanks.